Tech Junkies, what's going on fellas? I made a video a few weeks back on spinner baits. You guys had a few questions on things that I didn't cover, like any modifications that I do, uh, trailers, scent, you know, things like that. So we'll go ahead and cover that stuff right now in this video. Uh, keep in mind what I do to my baits fits my style of fishing, it fits the lakes that I fish. You know, the lakes that I fish, to be honest, are not that great. I'm sure you guys can see that in my videos. You know, they're not that great. Not a bunch of huge fish in them. And I got me a big old bass. I'm just at a park lake here. I believe this is my PB. I do not have a scale. I just came uh, to play around with the new reel. And man, this is a beast. I'm going to hold her up here. She got to be seven pounds easy. There we go. Look at this freaking beast. Man, it don't even show give it justice in this in this video. This fish is freaking huge. You know, I'm more looking for bites when I fish. So if, if I modify a bait, whether it be a spinner bait, chatter bait, jig, something like that, I'm looking for a smaller profile. I don't really tend to lean towards the bigger baits and target those bigger fish just because I don't feel there's enough in the lakes that I fish to where I'm going to be catching a lot of fish all day long. I don't have the patience to put on a big bait and target those big fish and maybe get one or two big bites a day. You know, I'm, I'm looking for more bites, so I like a smaller profile bait. It fits the lakes that I fish, it fits my style, I get more bites. It's, that's what works for me, so keep that in mind. But now I'm fishing these Picasso spinner baits, okay? Out of the package, these are good to go. I trim up the skirt, tie one on. Like I said, I'm ready to roll. Years ago, a few things that I used to do is I would trim up the frame itself, okay? Now, depending how far I trim it up, just depends really how far that blade would hang past that hook. Now, you can add a trailer hook. I don't like adding trailer hooks. I feel like it's snagged more up with them. Um, you know, I like to throw spinnerbaits around brush and rock and uh, lay downs, grass, things like that. And I just feel I get more snagged with a trailer hook. So I don't add one. If you guys would like to, I got a video on that. I'll link that down below as well. But I would just shorten up that frame. It would make the bait itself a little bit smaller and it would raise that blade up to where if they were to um, swipe at that blade, it'd still be somewhat in line with that hook. And I felt that I would hook up better by shortening up that frame. And all I would do is just cut the bait there or cut the frame there at that loop, make a new loop, put the swivel on. Like I said, it would raise up that blade a little bit and I'd be good to go. So you could do something like that. Uh, I would also, like if you had a bait like this, they had a lot of those beads on there. You could cut a few beads off, which would bring the blades closer together. You get some more noise out of that as the blades would clank together. You can do something like that. Uh, if the frame itself is stiffer, you can actually compress that frame down. Okay, you just compress that down like that. You gotta think, if you have a really stiff frame, the bass goes to grab the bait, he's gotta compress the frame down to get to the hook, okay? If you have a really stiff frame, you can compress that down the way the bass does not have to do it as far, okay? And when you do that as well, you can actually reel the bait a little bit faster. You can open up the frame, okay? They'll catch a little more water, give you a little more thump. You can do that as well. Now, if you compress the frame, if you open it up, just make sure that the arm is still in line with the hook, you know, keep it in line, keep it straight. But that's one reason I really like these Picassos they have this, um, it's called Invis-Wire. It's, it's a type of super wire, and it's, you know, it's, it's a light wire, but it's really strong. It compresses super, super easy. And I just don't miss any fish with them. You know, if they, they grab the bait, the wire compresses super easy, there's the hook. You know, awesome bait here, guys. Definitely check them out. But like I said, you can compress the frame down, open it up. You will get more thump out of those blades if you open it up. But um, that's something else that you can do with it. Other than that, guys, I trim up the skirt. Uh, I was fishing this one here yesterday. That's the length there that I like, just, just a little bit below the hook. Now, trailers. You guys ask a lot about trailers. Typically, I don't start out with a trailer. Now, I'll go ahead and use the whole like soft plastic jig type deal. I'm sure you guys have heard of this. Uh, usually, you get more bites with soft plastics and you get bigger bites with a jig. A jig's got a bigger profile. Usually, you target bigger fish with a jig and you'll just get more bites with a soft plastic. That's kind of how I look at a spinnerbait with and without a trailer. I just feel I get more bites without a trailer, 
but you know, I'll get a bigger bite once in a while with a trailer. But I like to see how the leg's fishing before I add that trailer. So like I said, I start out with no trailer. If I'm getting hit right away, getting bite after bite, then I'll go ahead and add that trailer on. The first trailer I'm gonna add is the Biospawn Plasma Tail 4.5 inch. These are my go-to trailers for a spinnerbait and a chatterbait. I got a video on my uh, chatterbait trailers as well. Definitely check that out. But it is hard to beat a, uh, a plasma tail on the back of a spinnerbait or a chatterbait. That's the first one that I, I put on right there. It doesn't really change the, uh, the retrieve at all as far as giving it any lift or not. You know, it doesn't catch any water. It's just profile. It's a little bit longer, gives the skirt a little more bulk. That's my go-to trailer, the, one, the first one that I'll start out with. Okay. Um, and that's kind of like, so that's what I do. If I feel that the bite's on and I'm getting bites is when I add the trailer. If I'm not getting any bites at all, I typically don't add a trailer as I feel, you know, just me personally, I feel that if I'm not getting bites with it off, um, I don't want to put it on because maybe I could spook some more fish that maybe wouldn't hit it because it looks bigger. It's just how I look at it. So if I'm not getting any bites at all, I don't add it. If I'm getting bites, then I'll add a trailer to uh, possibly up my catch, you know, get a bigger bite. If um, they're still hitting the plasma tail and you know, maybe I want to up my bite a little bit more if I'm looking for a little more vibration, I'll go to a grub, okay? Race tail grub here, PTL makes a good grub, Yamamoto, uh, Bass Pro grubs, any grub will work. Look at a grub. From there, you can go for like a swim bait. I like the um, Caffeine Shads, uh, the Little Easy. What do we got here? The uh, Black Shad. Uh, 4.8 fats, we got the 3.8s, typically I like the 3.8s on my spinner baits. But um, one thing you gotta keep in mind with a swim bait is a swim bait will add lift. So, uh, you know, like I said, plasma tail will not do anything, won't catch any water. But let's say you're fishing, you know, that's, this is why I don't really put swim baits on. If you're fishing shallow the way it is like I am, say you're only fishing a few feet of water and you put a swim bait on, it's gonna give your bait even more lift. So if I'm gonna reel fast like I do, put a swim bait on, it's going to be right below the surface. So it'd be harder to keep it down with a swim bait. So just keep in mind which trail you put on, you may give yourself some lift that you may not want. But in some situations, let's say you're fishing like six to eight foot of water, you want to fish a spinner bait that's got like a big Colorado blade on it. Well, the bigger the blade, uh, you're going to need a bigger frame. Bigger frame is typically a bigger weight or heavier weight. So if you're going to fish typically maybe a three to a half, but you want a bigger blade on there, you may have to go to like a three quarter or one ounce. If you're still in that shallow water, okay, and you want to slow roll that spinnerbait, you may have to put on a swim bait trailer to give yourself some more lift so you're not dredging the bottom. So just keep in mind what your trailer can do for you. If you want some lift on your bait, go up the swim bait. If you're not really looking for any lift, go for um, a grub or just a little um, straight tail worm. These work great. Uh, and scent was another thing you guys had questions on. I'll tell you a little story here. I never put, like I never put, uh, I never start with a trailer, scent, and like, let's say I'm fishing a jig and rattle. I never start with all three because I like to kind of figure out really what the fish want. I feel if I put all three on and I'm not getting bit, which one do I take off? Is it the rattle spooking them? Is it the scent spooking them? Trailer, what is it? So typically, like I said, I start out with no trailer, then I add the trailer, then I may add some scent. It just depends how the bite is. But there was this one time years ago when the lake was, that I fish is really, was really fishing good, Swim jig bite was always on. I had a swim jig, I had a grub on the back, double rattles, and I would have that skirt just dripping in scent. And it's like, I knew when something was off. I knew when a rattle fell off, I knew when the scent, you know, I needed to reapply. The bite was always on, like I said, with that, with that swim jig. And uh, toss it out there, if I'm getting bit, great. If the bite stops, I would just look at that swim jig and I'd notice a rattle was missing. Put the rattle on, throw it out there, I'd start to catch a fish again. Bites would stop, I'd look at it, both rattles were on, I'd smell the, the jig itself, the scent wasn't that strong, I'd soak that skirt again, bite would start again. So I just, you know, I, I don't like to put everything on at once, just one thing at a time to really figure out really what the fish want and um, just go from there. But that was just a situation to where it's like I had to have the trailer, both rattles and scent to get bit. So like I said, just let the fish tell you what they want and go from there, but I mean, some of the scents that I like is Gulp, uh, Chompers. I use a lot of the Bang stuff. That stuff's really good. But um, that's pretty much how I do it. You know, like I said, I start, I start bare, put the trailer on, then I'll add some scent, just depending on how the fish are biting. 
Um, like I said, I don't add rattles on my spinner baits, but you know you can kind of use the same thing for a jig as well. But um, you know, jigs typically I I always have um, have a rattle on. You're trying to imitate a crawfish, something like that. So you know, I always have my rattles on and uh, just working those on the bottom. A little extra noise. So, anyways, I think we're getting off subject here. I could talk for hours. I'm going to try and end this video before it, uh, it gets too long. Hopefully that video helped you guys out. If it did, give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll talk to you soon.